Okay, so tonight I'm going to walk through with everyone a bit more. Okay, while we're waiting for a last, the last few people to get their mics and their videos ready, okay, I just want to make a double check. Okay, make sure that you are actually changing the name, okay, of your Zoom account to reflect your given name, okay, that's registered with us, okay, so that that way we can actually verify uh, that you're with us throughout the webinar and towards the end, we will be issuing an e-certificate, okay, of participation, okay. So, so for those who have not actually changed their given name in the Zoom account, uh, please do so, okay, before we officially start from there, okay. Okay, so I think while you're doing that, okay, I, I just want to actually give a quick overview about myself. Okay, and once again, tonight, the webinar is not about me, but it's important for you to know who you're speaking to. Okay, so a very quick overview about myself. My name is Stanley. Okay, I am actually the speaker for this evening's actually webinar. Um, collectively, this is my fourth okay, webinar on psychology and mental health related topics. Okay, so tonight I'm going to actually go through a fair bit more about this topic to do with depression. So earlier I mentioned it's not about me. So to me, actually, honestly, this slide doesn't really matter. Okay, what matters will be the contents that's to follow, right? Okay, first, I think when we talk about depression, a lot of people like to know, okay, why is this actually going to be a very interesting topic? Okay. Two things. First, you will see a lot more people who are depressed, okay? And more of them are actually suffering from depression much earlier, okay? And in more serious condition. Okay, sometimes when you actually talk to laymen on the streets or even talking to your loved ones, your friends, uh, you'll come across this saying very frequently, okay? Dear so-and-so, I feel depressed. Okay, sometimes when you use this word depressed, uh, I think you are actually trying to use another word. Okay, you're feeling sad. You're feeling disappointed. Okay, but when you start to use the word depressed, it takes on a very different meaning. It means something is happening to you. Okay, and this actually condition is affecting you for more than two weeks, okay, of your life. So let's actually talk a bit more as we deep dive, but important, uh, the reason why we actually want to do this webinar is because we see this phenomenon. More people are getting depressed in actually much younger, uh, younger age, as well as suffering from this condition in a more serious manner. Okay. So with that, I would like to introduce you to a friend, okay, called Nancy. So Nancy's background. Nancy is actually able to work, okay, and she raised a family very successfully. That means she's very successful at work. She is also very much a family lady, okay? So she takes care of kids very well, all right? She can be actually a bit tense and sad sometimes. Most of the time, she's actually under some form of very pressurized setting, okay? Sometimes her emotion shows, she's not exactly putting on smiles, so she's a bit affected, right? She's actually feeling miserable most of the time, okay? And when she's miserable, Sometimes she doesn't share. She keeps to herself. She bottles up all her emotions, all her feelings and her thoughts. She's getting thinner and thinner, extremely shy. Okay, you could tell she's worried about something, but she's not going to tell you what happened. She has to tend to share what's on her mind. She keeps very much things to herself. Okay, and she believes that she cannot handle any more pressure or any more uh, extremely stressful circumstances, all right? And finally, she actually suffers from migraines many times in a month. Okay, sometimes the condition gets so bad that she has to call the day off from work. She will have to stay in bed, okay, throughout the whole day or if not stretching over days, all right? So Nancy, in terms of what I shared, in terms of description, okay, one thing about Nancy, she is suffering from depression, okay? And how is it like? Is it just because I share all these symptoms that's why I say that Nancy is depressed? Or is Nancy suffering from depression? Here, there's a high probability 
that Nancy is suffering from depression. And it's a very, very deep contrast from people who are just sad. Because if you look at my second point, sadness does not equate to depression. Okay? And even when you're feeling disappointed, it is also not the same as depression. So I think more importantly, I want to demystify. Sometimes I use the word depressed, okay? I think you are using the wrong word. Okay, you should be using sad, disappointed, let down. But when you use the word depressed, that's my, when my antenna goes up completely. Okay, let's look at Nancy a bit more okay, in depth. Let me bring you into her world. And this is what she describes herself about depression. Okay. So if I can go through this very quickly, according to Nancy, my depression is like a well. Okay. And when it's actually as worse, I'm stuck in the mud at the bottom of the well. Okay. The mud is full of worms and rats. And what I can only really do is to stay away from beating, from being eaten alive. Okay. And when she feels extremely good, okay, she's actually at the top of a well. But she's not able to come out of the well. Her elbows are perched on the wall. Okay, she's able to see what's happening around her, but she's not able to come out of the well or talk to people outside of the well. Okay, and most of the time, she is stuck somewhere in this dark, damn well. Okay, she remembers in the past. Okay, it's so good to feel alive and good as a human, but she's not exactly who she is today. Okay, so this is actually a description. Okay, that Nancy provides for someone who suffers from depression. Okay, and you realize that actually people who suffer from depression, uh, they don't just suffer from it just because it's one day or two days or three days of sadness. It's actually prolonged. Okay, and so tonight we're going to talk a bit more about what it's like to be diagnosed okay, with depression. Okay, so this is actually the world of depression. So sometimes to average men on the streets, Okay, if you're not suffering from depression, uh, you find that, oh, you know, wow, depression sounds really bad. Uh, I don't really understand what is this person going through. Okay, I can tell you from my first account how bad depression can be. Okay, so let's go a bit more, but this is just an introduction to make sure that we are all aligned in terms of getting a feel of what depression is all about. Okay, let's actually deep dive a bit more. So what's this terminology called depression? What is it about? Depression, okay, many people ex explain and they refer that to the common core of mental health problems. It's just any medical illness. Okay, when you have a common flu, you can self-cure. You can probably take actually some medication, okay, and then you'll recover from it. But when it comes to depression, it does not recover by itself, okay? It is a common core. It affects so many people, but the difference between depression and common cold Depression, you can't get out of it on your own. You need help in some ways or another. So tonight, we're going to talk a bit more about what you can do okay, to treat depression. All right? it, it's actually a common condition. Okay? Two things. Okay? You will see that actually a person has been feeling down and extremely worried. Okay? So there's a typo error here. It's not worries, but worried. Okay? Apologies for that. This person has also less lost pleasure in daily activities for more than two weeks. Okay, when we say you lost pleasure in daily activities, okay, it points to another psych psychological problem. This person is suffering from a hedonia. Okay, that means no matter what this person does, even though it's, it's, it's a favorite hobbies, it's a favorite things, it's a favorite lights, it doesn't bring excitement, okay, or actually her emotions back to those good old days. So she's emotionless okay she doesn't feel anything she's very very down okay and it must happen for more than two weeks so if you're feeling sad because it's only a week it's a day it's not depression okay you're feeling sad but you're not depressed all right so this is a common definition that we all have to keep to right before we go any further okay let's talk about how common it is okay in psychological terms we call it the prevalence okay of depression. That means how does it affect people? Okay, how common is this particular problem or this disease? Just depression alone, okay, 4.4% of the world's population is affected. 
and that equates to 350 million people. That's how common it is, almost coming to 5%. Every 20 human beings that you see on Earth, almost one of them is affected. Okay, and it's a global phenomenon. Okay, these numbers are getting larger and larger. Okay, later I'm going to share with you a bit more about what contributes to this and what are some of the symptoms that you see about this pool of people who suffers from depression. Okay, so it's a very widespread problem, not just because Singapore, not just because it's America, but it's global. It's a global issue. If I bring you back closer to Singapore, okay, so some people say, oh, you know, oh, this, are, this is a global problem. Nothing much to do with Singapore. I am in a small little country. I think people here are pretty much happy. Think again, okay? Out of 16 people in Singapore, there's one person in Singapore that's affected. So when we do a quick compare and contrast, earlier I said globally, okay? Out of 20 people, one person suffers from depression. But in Singapore, this number is getting worse. Now it's one out of 60. Okay, so it's much, much more common in Singapore versus the world. Okay, so some people say, oh, you know, uh, because we lead a very stressful life, uh, the country is too competitive. Okay, sometimes we may be born with this yearner, so and so forth. Later, we're going to look at some of the attributes. Okay, what causes depression? Okay, but it's definitely much more common in Singapore versus the world. Right? Okay, it's, it's the most common psychotic disorder in Singapore. Okay. No doubts about it, rank number one, okay? And Singaporeans love rankings, okay? Uh, unfortunately, this is rank number one, okay? So it's nothing to be happy about, but it is a very serious issue, okay? If you have been following my earlier webinars, uh, when I was talking about schizophrenia, okay? That was rank number two. This is number one. So it's getting better and better in terms of ranking, okay? And this is taken from the most recent mental health survey done in 2016 by Institute of Mental Health Singapore, right? So it's not as far as you think it is. Not because you cannot see it, it doesn't exist. It is all around us, okay? And it could be much, much more common than you see as we go into uh, much of the later slides. Okay, I think once we actually have this idea of how common it is, we have some basic appreciation of depression, uh, that's when I need to bring you into the world of depression. Okay. How many of you know that there are different types of depression? Okay. I mean, depression is depression, right? Okay. Some people say, oh, you know, I'm depressed. Uh, I'm going through depression. But hold on a minute. There are many different forms of depression. And tonight, I'm going to help you dis demystify some of these more common types of depression. Okay. So there are eight types of depression. These are the eight. So there's major depression, there's a dysmenia, okay, there's adjustment disorder, there's disruptive mood, okay, deregulation disorder, there's seasonal affective disorder, there's post nut pattern depression, bipolar, okay, and other forms of depressive disorders that cannot be categorized. Okay, these are the eight common types of depression. So don't worry about like, the terminologies, don't worry about the, the characteristics because we're going to deep dive into every single one of them to give you some basic appreciation, okay? So without further ado, let's look at individual types of depression, right? Okay, let's go into the first one. That's major depression. In some books, in some websites, okay, they call it clinical depression. It is basically the same. Psychologists like to call it major depression. Okay, also aka MD. Okay, but in certain cases, when you go and see a doctor, doctor will prescribe medication to you. Okay, and they, to them, is deemed as clinical depression. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter what's the terminology. It's the same symptom that is shown. Okay, so what happens in actually the first type of major depression is most common. Okay, it's so common that it contributes more than 15% all the depression cases as found, okay? So it's a major, major one. It's number one, okay, among the different types. In this type of actually depression, the patient and the family recognize something is wrong, okay? But they cannot pinpoint exactly what is wrong with this patient, but they feel that something is wrong somehow, somewhere, 
Okay, and most of the time, the patient looks, feels, and acts depressed. He goes around telling everybody, you know, I think something wrong is something wrong with me, but I'm not sick uh, physically. But I just feel that I am not in the right mind. Okay, so this is when actually the first telltale sign of depression comes in. Okay, and suddenly, okay, when the depression gets full blown, okay, it is so disturbing that sometimes the patient feels that, okay, God, I'm going mad. I'm going to be mad soon. Okay, so it becomes very disturbing to the patient because it's usually coming unannounced, right? There's no symptoms, okay, to deal with, oh yeah, you're going through depression. Normally, it just comes at one sudden blow. Okay, in this type of major depression, we categorize that, okay, into three intensity. You have mild, moderate, and severe. Okay, so it's like a spectrum of intensity or seriousness. And most of the time, it depends on how severe the symptoms is, as well as how it affects your day-to-day -day activities. Okay, whether are you able to eat, are you able to sleep, are you able to actually carry out your normal activities or go to work, so and so forth. So in, in this type of major depression, okay, which is also the most common, it is the one that's troubling most of the cases worldwide. Okay, but there are many other forms. So this is just first type. Let's go into the second type. Okay, dementia. Okay, uh, dementia is a bit different from major depression in the sense that this person goes through fewer symptoms. It's not as bad, okay? But in this case, it's a long-term illness, okay? Because this person who's affected is depressed throughout the day. And it's not affected just because it's a one-off event for two weeks. It's affected for two years or more. It's also known as chronic okay, depression. That means this, this actually depression will stay with you for a long, long time and nobody can actually give you a clue on when you'll be solved. So it's like for example, you're stuck with a chronic illness, okay? So depression, same thing, it can stick with you, okay? And, and in this case, uh, patients who are affected by this form of depression, we call them the walking wounded, okay? Walking wounded in the sense that, you know, they have some impact on their life. They can struggle, get through with everyday life. Okay, but their life is not going to be rosy. In fact, it becomes very nasty, very brutish, and very, very, very short. Okay, uh, because they can't get rid of this okay, depression. All right? And this tends to actually affect okay, their normal functioning over a long period of time. All right? Okay, and the third type will be what we call adjustment disorder. Okay, every time when we talk about adjustment disorder, uh, many students will say, you know, it has to re relate to grief. That means the passing on of a loved one. Adjustment order does not happen just because of grief. It happens a lot more because of other contributing reasons. First, in this type of depression, it's actually diagnosed when there's a change in your external settings. Okay, and your body, your mind is reacting to this. Okay, much more than expected. So normally there's an external stress factor on you. Okay, and your mind, your body will overreact and it sticks there. Okay, and in this depression, people will feel very hopeless, helpless, empty, joyless. They do not see meaning in life anymore. Okay, they find that whatever they do, it will just fall through the crack. Okay, whatever actually happy feelings, okay, that people are hoping to pass on to him, he just feels empty inside. Okay. He's not able to feel the joy or the emotions that used to be with him. Okay. And more importantly, it's always sad. Very, very, very sad. Uh, very, very disappointed with life as a whole. Okay. So adjustment disorder is extremely common. Okay. And typically, they can tell you exactly what happened. It's always because of a major setback. It's because of an injury, a illness, for example, diabetes. Okay, it can be a death of someone very close to them. In this case, it's usually a loved one, okay, or someone who has a very strong relationship, okay, with the affected patient. Okay, sometimes it's because of relationship breakdowns. When you go through a divorce, when you when your bo boyfriend or girlfriend leave you, uh, and you can't come to grips with it. Okay, uh, and number five is interesting. It's when actually sometimes there's a blow to one person's self-esteem. Okay, or pride. 
Okay, you realize that actually a lot of famous celebrities, okay, especially those uh, that shares with you a bit more, why am I actually feeling this way? Okay, that's because their esteems are affected. Actors, actresses, celebrities, politicians, sometimes they are depressed because of self-esteem. Okay, they, they have a blow. And it, when it comes to adjustment disorder, a lot of people say, you know, you shouldn't react this way. Oh, you know, it's okay, your girlfriend leave you. It's okay, you, your, your wife is divorcing you. You can move on. Uh, someone passed away two weeks later or two months later or two years later, you'll feel all right. It's time to move on. But you know, sometimes as a strange uh, as a strange outsider, okay, we, we always feel that, yeah, I think, you know, this adjustment disorder will disappear. But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it just stays put. Okay, so much that it affects the person, even though external observers don't really feel, okay, that this person, this patient should feel the same way. Okay, so in, in adjustment disorder, it's not about how you judge the patient, okay, or his circumstances. It's about how this patient judges his circumstances, all right? So, so I think adjustment disorder is also extremely, actually common. It's just that um, most people cannot pinpoint and say that, oh, you know, it's actually adjustment disorders. Okay, so that's a third type, which is common, okay, especially to celebrities. Okay, the fourth type is what we call DMDD, okay, disruptive mood deregulation disorder. This particular type of depression only happen to children, okay? I don't think there's any children in this particular webinar, okay? But if you are, okay, uh, this could affect you, okay? But I have to put a disclaimer. It usually affects people below 18, okay? The onset for DMDD is 10 years old, okay? The, the most peak period of this type of depression is when the child is between six to 10, okay? But the peak onset is about 10. It can affect someone all the way up to uh, when he or she is 18. So in this particular type of depression, which is unique to kids, what happens? Okay, it applies to children who have repeated severe tantrums. Okay, or they are consistently in the angry and defiant mood every single day. Okay, so it's not just your terrible too. All right, it is not also kids who argues with you or tends to speak back to you. Okay, in this DMDD, these two scenarios must happen. Okay, it must be repeated and very severe tantrums, usually drawn, uh, blown out of proportion. Second, the, the child concern must perpetually be angry or defiant every other single day. Okay, so and in this case, uh, the outbursts displayed by the child are usually out of proportion. Okay, and it could occur between two to three times every week, and usually it's in more than two settings. Okay, when we say settings, it can be happening at home, it can be happening in school, it can be happening in public. Okay, it does not matter where the setting is, but you will find that people who suffer from DNDD, they will actually display that regardless of the setting, and it must happen twice, more than twice. Okay, so kids who are suffering from this, they are perpetually uh, forever angry, okay? So some people ask, uh, isn't that very, very close to actually bipolar, okay? Some people say bipolar. Some people say, oh, you know, this, this child is just angry. Okay, let's put actually a very, very clear demarcation here. Bipolar, most of the time, does not affect kids, but it does affect some kids, okay? So later you're gonna see bipolar, okay? So here, I have to put a distinction. This is not bipolar, okay, uh, in its own proper definition. But some actually psychologists point out that this is to address bipolar affected children, okay? Because actually medication, when it comes to all these medical or pharmaceutical companies, uh, they need to put a particular type of depression, okay, name it. And this is where you can, you get actually DMDD. Okay, so in DMDD, how common it is among children? One to 3% of children under age of 10 show such 10 symptoms. So it's not something that is not common. In fact, it's quite common. Out of 100 kids, you get three of them. Okay, so that's how 
common need is. So DME unique to children shouldn't happen to adults, at least uh, not when you are after 18 years old. Right? So that's a fourth type okay, of depression. Let's go to the fifth type. Ah, something very interesting. Now it's about season. Okay, seasonal adjustment disorders. Okay, uh, this is a fifth type of actually depression. Fortunately, it doesn't happen too much to people who are living uh, along the equator lines. Okay, this type of depression affects people, especially those people who stays in uh, non-tropical countries. That means if you stay in the north, okay, especially when there are four seasons, some of them are affected by this type of depression. Okay, it happens especially during the winter months. Right. So Singaporeans, please don't tell me you, you are suffering from seasonal adjustment disorder. I know December is a bit cold, but it's not winter. Okay. So SAD doesn't apply to you unless you see four seasons. Okay. So in this type of disorder, it's always linked to changing levels of sunlight. Okay. And someone who's very familiar with the seasons, you'll know as autumn arrives, the amount of sunlight that these countries will receive will get much less and lesser. Because the days, okay, where you get more sunlight will shorten, okay, the closer you are to winter. So in SAD, it affects people who are staying in the north or sometimes actually when they stay in countries with four seasons. Okay, in this type of depression, people feel very lethargic. Okay, they don't want to move. Okay, they they have no energy, uh, and or they feel very low energy. They sleep very very long. Okay, sometimes they can sleep up to days in one shot. Okay, they refuse to get out of bed. Okay, because it's dark outside anyway. So why should I get out of bed? Okay, so they sleep very long. They gain weight because sometimes they eat a lot. Okay, and there's a very strong craving for carbo. Okay, carbohydrates. So you find that they like to actually take a lot of um, meat. Okay, not meat, but actually rice. Okay, wheat may so and so forth anything that gives them carbohydrates right so in this type of actually depression it will improve okay symptoms will get much better if they move to the equator line okay and that's when they will visit countries like malaysia singapore so and so forth uh, especially so for people who suffer from this type of adjustment disorders okay so this is a fifth type of depression okay sixth type okay postpartum depression also known as postnatal depression, all right? Uh, it's actually a type of depression that happens to young mothers or new mothers. It is when a person experiences symptoms of depression at any time during pregnancy, okay? That means it does not happen after you give birth. Huh? It can happen anytime when you actually are um, going to have a baby or you already have a baby, okay? That's in the making. All right, it can happen up to a year after you have a baby. So in short, we call it postnatal depression. Layman, you will know. But the official name is postpartum depression. Okay, in postpartum depression, 85% of new mothers will experience this baby blues. 85%. So mothers, if you feel that, oh, you know, I'll be depressed after giving birth, you are not alone. It's a very, very common type of depression and it affects women much more. If you have been actually following my sentence very carefully, it affects women much more. So what am I trying to say here? Fathers, okay, out there, don't think you're spared, okay? Postnatal depression will affect 10% of you, even though you are not the one giving birth, okay? So don't have this perception that postnatal depression is only for ladies. You can be the lucky male that gets affected equally as well. All right. So postnatal depression forms number six. Okay. Number seven. Okay. It's something very, very, very uh, common as well, especially in Singapore. It's known as bipolar affective disorder. Laymen call it bipolar. Okay. And in bipolar, a lot of people say, you know, oh, bipolar, it, it means this person is crazy. Well, literally, yes and no. Okay. What happens in bipolar? It's a very, very severe and lifelong mental illness, okay? It's diagnosed from 18 years old and above, usually, right? And in bipolar, you will get periods of depression. That means you're really, really sad, okay? You don't know what to do with your life. Followed by all of a sudden, oh, I'm so excited. I'm willing to do a lot of things. 
So it is actually like a roller coaster. It's up and down, okay? And it happens very, very quickly. And sometimes you cannot make sense, sense of it. One person could be crying and the next moment he's smiling, okay? Or he could be really, really sad and the next moment he's super excited. It's like, a, it's like actually an energizer battery, okay? Ready to go and try out a lot of things. So in bipolar, which is obviously not uh, one very, very common type of illness, okay, classified under depression, it is affected by depression. And that's why the older name for bipolar is known as manic depression. So in bipolar, okay, patients, because of their ups and downs, it's an emotional roller coaster. Many a times they take on risky attitudes to life. Okay. They will do things without rationalizing, okay, without taking safety precautions. Okay. And most of us will be very, very actually sensible. We will take, we will lead a very logical life. You know, we want to be healthy. We want it to be very routine. Okay. For people who are suffering bipolar, from bipolar, they don't. Okay. They cannot even make sense of what they're doing the next moment. So in many cases, they lead a very casual, okay, very risky and dangerous life. Okay. Casual sex. Uh, they will actually go into addiction. They will take up substance abuse. They will go drugs. They will do everything that's illegal. Okay. And that's because of their condition. So in bipolar, it's actually one type of depression, okay? Uh, although it's not uh, actually the main purpose of this tonight's webinar, but I thought it's important for me to cover, okay? Just to give you an over, overview. Okay, the last type is depressive disorders that cannot be classified into those earlier seven categories. In this, it includes people, okay, who may or may not have an external cause, but yet they are affected in the sense they cannot function every day. All right, because of this depression, it applies to people who are grieving. Okay, that means someone passed away. Okay, and they are a not able to walk out of this. It also applies to people who are depressed because there's a change in their lives or there's a loss in their life. For example, they they lost their limbs. Okay, they lost their health, uh, or they are diagnosed with a terminal illness. Okay, uh, especially diabetes. Okay, diabetes is actually another part that comes under this. Okay, or it could be also people who are generally suffering from long-term chronic illness, okay, and they are not able to get happier because they can't recover anyway. So this actually category is to lump in all other types of depression which are not clearly falling into the first seven types. Okay, and in such cases, the symptoms may not be as severe. It can be shorter versus the first seven types. Okay, but it's still a form of depression, right? So I hope I've given you a quick overview about the different types of depression. And now we are going to talk about the symptoms. And because it's symptoms, uh, it's extremely close to my heart. Okay, later I'm going to explain to you why. Okay, there's a total of nine symptoms. Let's look at each one of them. First, there's a continuous low mood or sadness. You can't explain why, you just feel that you don't have the energy. You just feel that you're being sapped away of even the slightest amount of energy to do things, okay? You're not in the mood to do anything, even if people push you to do so. You have very low esteem, okay? Something is wrong with you. Um, you don't feel good about yourself, okay? You don't have your own identity anymore as a person. You feel hopeless and helpless, okay? You find that, oh, you know, there's no meaning in my life. Uh, I shouldn't be actually, I shouldn't survive in this world. Uh, even if, let's say, I'm really suffering from depression, nobody can help me. I can't help myself. So these are all the three symptoms that's coming in. There's more. Okay. Most of the time, you're very tearful. Okay. You can drop tears very easily. The slightest thing triggers you. Okay. You realize that people who suffer from depression, uh, they cry a lot. Okay. And when they cry, it's for the smallest thing. Okay. It, to you, it can be a very, very, very minor thing, but to them, it's a major thing, okay? So they tear a lot, okay? They probably actually invest a lot, okay, of their energy in crying as well, okay? They feel very guilt-ridden, okay? Most of the time, they feel guilty about themselves, not being able to do more, not being able to help themselves, not being able to get themselves out of these depressive disorders, okay? Or sometimes, every smallest mistake, 
in life, whether is it attributable to them or not, they'll just take it on myself. It's my fault. It's the reason why I'm alive in this world. That's why this thing happened. Okay, so they attribute all these mistakes to themselves. Okay, they also become very irritable, intolerant of others. Okay, so they, they are very easily agitated. Okay, they are not actually very patient, especially towards others as well. So sometimes they throw a temper. Okay, and they will also actually feel very unmotivated and they are not interested. In, in this case, earlier I mentioned a hedonia. They are not interested in doing the things that they used to be interested in. Even if it's their favorite hobby, their favorite food, their favorite activities, their favorite loved ones, they are not interested anymore. They just like to actually lie low, stay in one corner, keep to themselves, okay, and best don't do anything. And watch just time pass by slowly. Okay. They also find it very difficult to make decisions. Okay, most of the time, because they are really affected in their judgment, okay, they do not know what is a logical decision to make. And many times, uh, they will ask you for advice. Okay, they'll ask you, oh, you know, what should I do? But they will never be able to say, okay, let's do it. They won't. They'll just say, oh, okay, I think about it. Let's see how things go. Let's see how things unfold. All right. Okay. And finally, they have no interest okay, in pulling their life. They do not see meaning in why they should be on earth. They do not see how their behavior is affecting people around them. Okay? And these nice symptoms are extremely common in people who go through a depression. Extremely common. Okay? And the one that affects most will be low mood, feeling helpless, uh, guilt ridden, careful, as well as unmotivated. Okay? So these are the more common ones among the lot. And in this case, depression can make it very difficult for them to concentrate or remember things. Sometimes you actually you repeat things to them, but they will not take it into memory. Okay? Their memory is blocked. Okay? Because their mind is forever thinking about something, forever thinking about the sadness, forever thinking about the situation they are in, etc. To a point where eventually depression may lead to self-harm and even suicide. Okay, so later I'm going to share a bit more in terms of the stages, how people go through this type of um, actually different uh, transitions, right? So in depression, how do we know that you are likely suffering from depression? Okay, when you have four or more symptoms for at least two weeks. Okay, remember, keyword, uh, four or more. If you have three symptoms, you're probably not depressed. Yet. Okay, and even if you have four symptoms, it must prolong for at least two weeks. Some people suffer for years, okay? So it's not an easy thing to detect because sometimes you could just attribute to the fact that you're sad. But this is not about being sad. It's more than just being sad, right? So this is by definition taken from WHO, okay? So what causes depression? Some people say, oh, since you, are, you actually know of habit, tell me, how can I get away from depression? Or how can I prevent depression? Okay, I don't have the crystal ball to tell you what exactly allows you to prevent, but I can tell you what causes depression. So hopefully you can stay away from all these causes or these factors of depression. So internally, let's look at what happens to the person. Okay, these are usually referring to factors found within a person and they normally interact with external factors at large. So even if you have internal causes, it does not relate to depression yet. It's normally combined with something else. Okay, these are the four common internal causes. Personality, okay, you're a pessimist. Everything that you, that you do, you always take a negative view of things, okay. You are not excited by challenges in life. In fact, challenges to you in life could be a very bad thing. Okay, so you're a pessimist by nature, right? You're very reserved. Okay, keep things to yourself. You don't believe in sharing. That's when you have a high probability, okay, of getting depressed. Okay, sometimes it could also be because of childhood experiences. Okay, when you come from a, actually a family where one of the loved ones is suffering from depression, okay, it rubs off in you, okay? And when it rubs off in you, it's not just what happens in childhood. Sometimes it happens because of, your family history, okay? If say your, your parents, okay, one of your parents has a history of depression, 
okay, or maybe your siblings, your brothers or your sisters suffers from depression, okay, but it's usually more parents, okay, when they suffer from depression, this actually depression has a genetic, okay, link. That means in other words, if your parents suffer from depression, there's a very, very high probability that you will eventually get depression as well, okay? So family history is very, very uh, critical as well. Right. And of course, if you are suffering from physical heart issues, okay, heart problems, diabetes, okay, or probably you, you lost okay, some physical abilities, like for example, hearing, so on and so forth, you will also get depressed. Right. So these are the four internal attributes of depression found in a person. All right. Let's go into external cause. What are some of the external circumstances and settings that will affect someone? Okay, and cause someone to have depression. Okay, so in external cause, it's usually life events, and these life events have a very negative impact on you. Okay, uh, these are the nine of them. Okay, money. Money is really important. When you have no money or you are poor, depression usually comes along. Okay, you're stressed. You're perpetually trying to pay off the bills. You're trying to make ends meet. Okay, the stress factor that comes with it will result in depression. Right? When you're unemployed, okay, for a long period of time, you just cannot get a job, no matter how hard you try. Okay? Or you're addicted, okay, substance abuse. You take to drugs, you are uh, uh, alcohol addict, okay? depression will also find you along the way. Or when you're actually being bullied in school, okay? or when you're bullied at work, okay, the stress that you go through, sometimes it will push you off the cliff. And finally, bereavement someone in the family passed away or something that's close to you passed away, say for example, your pet. Okay, your pet that has been with you for the last 10, 15 years. Okay, you literally treat him like your son and your daughter. Uh, but when this pet passes on, you are actually feeling very sad. So this bereavement can affect you. And finally, of course, relationship problems. Okay, boyfriend, girlfriends, marriages may actually have issues and these relationship issues will cause depression as well. Okay, and finally, earlier we talked about postnatal depression, which is pregnancy and birth. And finally, if you're a lone ranger, okay, you always like to do things yourself. You like to keep things to yourself, you don't believe in sharing. That's when loneliness will hit you too. Okay, so remember, it's not just about external cause. Okay, it's always a combination of internal and external. So they work like partners, okay? They are very closely linked, okay? And how do we diagnose depression? We look at two main methods. One, clinical interviews. You see a psychiatrist, you see a psychologist, you see a counselor. Sometimes when they interview, when they talk to you, okay, they will have a checklist, they'll take, oh yeah, you have like four or five symptoms. And when is this happening? For more than two months, okay? So they will tell you, yeah, I suspect that you have actually some form of depression, okay? Or you can help yourself, okay? You can return to a checklist, a specialist checklist. So earlier I given you a quick checklist of the symptoms, okay? You can just do a small little tick by yourself, okay? Oh yeah, I think I have this and I've been suffering for like two weeks or more, okay? So these are two main methods. How to diagnose whether you have depression, okay? The earlier you detect this condition, the earlier you can start your treatment. The earlier you start your treatment, the better it is for you. Okay, why? Because depression itself is like a spiral. It's a downward spiral. When you don't nip it in the butt, it will come back. It will haunt you. It will follow you. Okay? And every time when it comes back, you'll be sucked into this black hole. Things will get worse and worse. To the point where you're pushed off completely off the cliff, Okay, and that's when you start to develop self-harm or even suicidal thoughts, okay? So it's curable. I just want to stress, depression is curable, okay? So please do not wait till the last moment. You can help yourself, okay? And for some of you who could be actually suspecting, okay, that you're going through some form of depressive disorders in your life, please do not give up, okay, in life. Okay, it's curable, and I hope that you really go about seeking help okay, from the qualified professionals. Okay, but one thing that I have to note, 
people who suffer from depression, even if they cure, okay, sometimes you will still recur. Okay, so people who suffer from depression, on average, they have four episodes over the course of their entire life. Okay, we can cure it, but sometimes you'll come back, okay, in smaller ways. So just don't take it to heart, okay, if you have fully recovered. Just take things with a pinch of salt, life will be so much better. Okay, so when does depression come in? Ah, a lot of people like to ask, okay, yeah, I heard so much about different types of depression. I know how to diagnose, etc. But is there an ideal age? Is there a favorite period that depression comes in? Okay, we call it incidence rate. Okay, so one problem that you see, for every generation that has been born since the 1900s, the lifetime risk of depression has increased generation after generation. Okay, now one in four percent, okay, will have a serious encounter of depression at one point of their life. So as I speak, I have 50 people out there. Okay, so if I do a quick divide, guess what? At least 12 of you will have a serious encounter with depression. Okay, and if you think that is not too bad, oh, maybe I'm the lucky. Okay, I'm the lucky 36 who's not affected. Every fifth person right now in this Zoom room would be going through some form of depressive symptoms. And guess what? Because there's 50 of you, there should be about 10 of you right now who is going through depressive, okay, depressive disorders. 10 of you. Some of you may say, oh no, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I am not suffering from anything. Okay, and that's when depression comes in. Okay, because sometimes you are trying to mask depressive disorders. You are denying the fact that you are affected. So if you do suspect, my suggestion is try to go to a qualified mental health professional. Okay, or at least do some quick checks on yourself. Okay, so very, very important. So here, I'm not scaring you because it's not about because you are aware of depression today, okay? But because generation after generation, research has proven that it's a true growth in numbers, hard numbers. We're talking about absolute numbers, not because you know about it, but because the numbers of people who are suffering from depression is increasing worldwide, all right? Okay, so the favorite age, okay, or the average age that you'll be depressed, in the 1900s, it's 30 years old, when you're about 30 years old, okay? People will normally be, be affected. Now, today, if you're 15 years old, that's your average onset of depression. In the past, you have to be someone who's probably, you know, about, for ladies-wise, probably you just started a family, you're about to give birth, you have kids, for, uh, actually, for male, probably you just started your career, you start to establish yourself, but today, no. Depression has shifted forward. People who are suffering from depression are getting younger and younger and younger, now 15 years old. So much that youngsters, okay, and you, you have heard this before, a kid as young as seven, eight years old could be suffering from depression. It's no longer 30 years old. So why is that happening? Okay, that's when I will categorize things for you. 25% of women Okay, and 11.5% of men would have depression at one stage of your life. So here, between genders, male and female, women are more vulnerable to depression right from the onset. Okay, some people ask why. It's unfair. Okay, why men and women are not equal in this case? Okay, in honest fact, when it comes to depression, it's not fair because women go through postnatal depression. Okay. Women actually soak in a lot of um, actually stress and pressures in life, okay? For example, when you go to childbirth, okay, when you have to manage your kids, sometimes you have to manage your husband, <laughs> okay? Or when careers get actually a hit, a setback, so on and so forth. So women are actually much more vulnerable versus men, okay? 10% of children will suffer from depression before the age of 12. So depression in kids are not unheard of. And if you do suspect your children to be going through some form of depression, 
please seek help early. Okay. And finally, I will not forget about the elderly. 20% of them would have depressive disorders. Okay. Uh, so the difference between these categories, okay, elderly and children, these two groups, most of the time is underreported. That means it's not officially added to 350 million. Huh? It's underreported. There are a lot more kids, a lot more elderly who are suffering from depression. It's just that they do not seek professional help. All right? So please keep an eye out for your kids as well as for your elderly at home. All right? Okay. So I would like to focus on men and women. Okay. Uh, it's not better or the success, but it's still important for me to highlight what's different. For men, okay, why the reason they normally won't actually report being depressed is because society has certain expectations of them. They are expected to be strong, masculine. Okay, they must be able to fend for themselves. And because of this society expectation, okay, they will tend to brush things off. Oh, you say, okay, uh, I'm not depressed, I'm just sad. Okay, I am not actually feeling or facing all these symptoms. I am just not myself today. But women tend to be very vulnerable. Okay, because they're more emotional creatures. Okay, so, but it's not a bad thing, right? Don't get me wrong, ladies, it's not a bad thing, as you're going to see later. Okay, men with early onset major depression, they are only half as likely to marry. Okay, they will not look for life spouses, neither will they get their girlfriends. If they are detected with early depression, they normally will not get any extra okay, relationships. Women, okay, on the other hand, if they have early depression, more than half of them, okay, more than half usually, they will not be pursuing their studies. They'll just stop somewhere, okay, below a tertiary education. And interesting, when we go back to the men, men will suppress depression through three things, substance abuse. They become alcohol, alcoholics, right? They take to drugs, Right? They will like to actually go for violence. Okay? They get into fights very commonly or they will go to disruptive behavior. Right? So when we say disruptive behavior, what type of disruptive behavior are we talking about? They like to infringe self-harm. Okay? They like to actually get into trouble with the law, so and so forth. They will do things that's illegal. So there's a way for them to suppress depression. Okay? Uh, women, on the other hand, oh, they tend to develop suicidal thoughts much quicker than men, okay? But the interesting thing is, even though they have suicidal thoughts, most of them will not carry out the suicide. They'll think about it. Oh, maybe I should end my life. Oh, maybe I'm ready to say goodbye to this world. But many times when it comes to the final obstacle, they stop short. Uh, okay, I, I think I changed my mind. It's okay. I don't think I want to kill myself anymore. So th this difference between men and women is really, really, really interesting. Okay, let's go back to men again. Men, although they do not express the fact that they could be suffering from depression, more of them tend to follow through with their suicide attempts and they succeed. That means if when you're talking about people who die, okay, as a result of suicides, which is attributable to depression, more men die from suicides as a result of depression versus women. Women, most of the time, they will think about it, but they will not kill themselves. Men, once they decide to end their life, they will follow through with it. Okay, so if, if we really look at suicide rates, huh, the men will kill themselves much more than women. Okay, so ladies, don't worry. You will think about it, but you probably won't go through it. Men, you don't think about it, but you will definitely go through Okay, with the attempt. Right? So this is actually the difference between the genders. And what, call, what is the total cause of depression? Okay, It's a very, very costly, very, very debilitating illness for society because just in the United States alone, there are 50,000 suicides okay, in a year. And in comparison to 15 years ago, it's only 33,000. So in a period of like 15 years, the numbers have gone up almost like 17,000. Okay, so some of you may be asking in Singapore, okay, then how many people die? Unfortunately, our government don't really release okay, the exact numbers. Okay, so I am not able to pinpoint exactly for you how many people commit suicide as a result of depression. 
Okay, but if I borrow a statistics from the United States, it's quite worrying. Okay, and eventually 15% of them who suffer from depression, they will end their life. So for every 20, 3% will really go and kill themselves. All right. Okay, so besides that, it is also in monetary terms, okay, it costs 210 billion a year. Okay, in terms of direct costs, especially when it comes to medical care. And this amount, 210 billion a year, is double of what actually it will cost the whole United States government to invest in education for the whole country. In Singapore, it is also second to cancer in terms of economic impact. Right? And in terms of cost rise, it's approximately about the same cost as heart disease. So it's competing, okay? Trying to see who's number one. But fortunately, cancer is right at the front, followed by depression, okay? And of course, heart disease. So it is very expensive. It is very, very debilitating to society. Okay, so how to treat people with depression? Three methods, all right? These are the three methods. So we have psychodynamic psychotherapy. We have antidepressants. So antidepressants are also known as actually antipsychotic medication. Okay, another name, SSRIs. Okay, and SSRIs are issued not only by psychiatrists, in some countries they're issued by medical doctors, okay, to help people suffering from severe depression. Uh, so here I'm not going to talk about specifically about each type of treatment and what happens because that can be a okay, talk to actually a cognitive behavioral therapist. Okay, also known as a psychotherapist, right? So three types of treatments will actually be useful in helping people with depression. Okay, and because of seriousness, because of the impact of depression, uh, when you look at actually depression, World Health Organization puts depression as the top three forms of disability. It is very, very common. It is very, very actually worrying. Okay, so uh, there are other types of mental disorders like bipolar is there, schizophrenia is there, but those are ranked further down. Okay, depression is still in the top three. And once again, thank you everyone. I will see you soon in my next webinar. Thank you. Have a good evening. Rest well.